had this little idea, you know, I was uh, driving in the car today, and I've had this idea before, but I thought I'd share it with you guys. I don't know if you guys look at life this way or not, but you know, you're driving on the road, and you see it. You see all the buildings, and you see the sky, and, you, you know, you see the roads and the bridges and all this stuff, you know. And, I, you know, I'm thinking, I'm, you know, I've thought of this once, oh, several times before, but the first time I thought about it was in 2007. You know, we're, we're this round ball, right? We're this round earth, it's just in the middle of space, you know, in, in, in our gal galaxy, you know, outside of being in the universe, you know. And on this bowl, there's all these, these architecture or all these buildings that we have resurrected, not myself, of course, but I use that in an in a extremely general way. And, you know, all these buildings have been built and um, bridges and roads and all these things are going on. The cars are moving around and the birds are flying and people are walking and, you know, and all these things are going on, right, you know. And, and here is all this massive amount of activity going on. And based upon our own sensory perceptions, our, you know, visual and hearing and touch and smell and taste, we were able to, you know, have built this planet the way we have, you know, and or send, you know, uh, space shuttles into other, um, you know, onto other planets, you know, or, you know, the rover onto uh, Mars or satellites past Pluto and all this stuff, you know. And we're like the only planet within our galaxy that has these things, you know, like bridges and buildings and spaceships going outside of our atmosphere or stratosphere and, you know, all this activity going on, you know, but it's based upon our own experience. So really everything is uh, subjective. Now, of course, like the, uh, what, what is uh, his name? Uh, 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 oh, what's his name? Nishi, Nishi and like Hume and these guys would say every, everything is subjective. I mean, everything is subjective. And I, I always say the best way to show you that not everything is subjective is for someone to punch you literally in the face. That shit hurts. Like if you punch Nishi in the face and this your fist came this way. I'm not that I'm condoning this. I'm just make, trying to make a point. I don't want people to go out there after watching this video if they ever watch this video and go be start punching people in the face. I'm just making a point. Okay. And so, you know, Punch Nishi or Hume or one of these guys in the face, and then they realize not everything is subjective. That shit is coming from someone else's arm, which has a fist at the end, you know, and and hitting you in the face, and that shit causes extreme pain, if not disfigura disfiguration, you know, disfigures you. So there are things that are going on around us but there are also things that is quite subjective which is true a lot of things are subjective and these buildings and bridges and roads and all this have been pretty much based upon other buildings and other bridges and other roads that have been going on since you know since i don't know, 10, 20,000 bc i mean they built bridges out of bamboo at one time uh, they built you know huts and mud huts and and straw huts and branch tree branch huts and all kinds of huts you know from and eventually went from the mud hut or the uh, igloo or the dependent upon where you're at on the earth or the straw hut or the tree branch hut or to the leaf hut or uh, building, so to speak, all the way to, you know, some, uh, the tallest build. I don't know what the tallest building of the world uh, the world is. I think it was Sears in Chicago, Sears building. Then there was the Empire State Building. I think there's one bigger than, or taller than those uh, the ones I just named. But we were always continuously, not only just building higher, but also building much more different designs because it's based upon different types of material, 
I mean, back in those days, they built it out of mud or straw. Now we're building things out of, you know, different types of metals and different types of glass. And, uh, you know, the wiring systems are much different and things of that nature, you know. So, but all that is based on from uh, a, a time that began many, many years ago. It's not like it just came out of the blue. And those things that, gra those buildings or those shapes and things, those shelters that have evolved over or developed over a period of time till today is mainly... Yeah, mainly that's subjective, meaning that we create these things by based upon some guy, you know, drawing on a piece of paper or whatever have you, and designing these buildings. And then for, um, you know, construction companies to build, to build it according to what the plan is on paper, and then they build it there from, and then they get the manpower, or they get robotics. These days, sure... Sure, robotics play a lot, a huge role in manufacturing objects to so we can build buildings and this, you know. But it's still all it is is still just a building. It's just a form of shelter. <clears throat> it's just the shape, and everything has changed. The same with the bridges and the roads and everything. Transportation, you know, at one time, uh, you know, they had a wagon with. Uh, they figured uh, well. A round wheel will actually uh, move a lot better than a square one, you know. And then they went to the, uh, well, they went from the horse to the wagon, then they went from the wagon to, uh, no, I don't know, what's, what was the next thing? Um, steam engines, maybe? And then <clears throat> went to bicycles and went to cars and trucks, and now spaceships and all kinds of, you know, satellites and, is, which is a form of transportation, sort of. It's moving a camera and, and digs up minerals from different planets and meteorites or comets or whatever have you. But it's still moving. It's a form of transportation. So, you know, when you look at life... You know, it's a it's a... It's a question of objectivity as well as subjectivity. Like, you can't take a wooden toothpick and put the Empire State Building and think the toothpick's going to hold up the Empire State Building on its side. That's not going to happen. But, on the other hand, if you dig deep enough into the ground to brace that building, that you could put the building way up into the sky. You know, if you have an extremely secure <clears throat> foundation. And that came over a long period of time. And how about all the buildings and bunkers and tunnels and palaces, so to speak, and living quarters that are built underground? Just ask the President of the United States or all the prime ministers or, or you know, kings and queens of different countries. And they have plenty structures that are built underground let alone above ground <clears throat> but all these things are objective based upon our own ideas these ideas that we formulate to make all these things so ultimately yes it comes from you subjectively but a lot of this uh, if not most of it exists out there once it comes from us or else it would just be this <clears throat> round planet with um, with plant you know with, with plants and trees and uh, minerals and water and earth and rocks and all the crap that for formed during the you know after the quote unquote big bang. Uh, that's what I thought about when I was driving on the road today. Which is, you know, which is a cool thing in a way, you know, because when I'm dead, or when whoever <clears throat> dies eventually, the generation that is coming up, like in the ones that are in their teens, or even younger than that, like, 
you know, seven, eight, nine years old, they're starting to <clears throat> realize and be aware of things and come into their own and all that. As each generation goes by, and they'll die as well, just like every generation does, and they will develop things that are more exquisite and more modern and based upon today. You know, and this will continue on until, well, if man, you know, completely blows up the earth. But I, that's all fantasy. We're not going to do that. The only way they would do that is if the, the wealthy elite families are able to inhabit another planet just like they have here on earth and live entirely on that other planet and walk around without having to wear suits so you could breathe properly and all this other shit, then yeah, they, they probably blow up the earth. But until that happens, no. This, the earth will be here for a very long time. And the irony of it all is, is even if, let's say, they go to another planet, they live, they blow up the earth via all the nuke. They drop every single nuke on the planet, and it'll wind up disfiguring the hell out of the planet, but probably the planet will still survive. I don't think it literally, like, crack the planet open. It'll screw around with the atmosphere big time, and things will change on the planet, like a lot of, you know, living things will die, and plants probably will die, and things of that nature. But it'll probably still remain one huge rock with some molten in the middle of it. And then maybe in time that'll turn into something else. So don't ever think just without the human, nothing exists. There are things out there that does exist. It's uh, there is objectivity out there. There there is things that do actually exist out there in the world. But, uh, of course, a lot of that comes from our subjectivity. But the Earth itself will be there, regardless if, uh, if hum humanity is here or not on the Earth, is my point. So, you know, enjoy the experience, because someday you will die, as everyone has died, you know. Uh, all the greats have died, you know, you're... You know, your own mother and father, my mother and father di has died. Uh, you know, your my sister even have di has died. You know, Frank Sinatra died, Dean Martin died, Sammy Davis Jr. died, the whole Rat Pack died, except I don't think Joey Bishop might still be alive until he played a minor role. You know, even Jerry Lewis is eventually going to die, and he was one of my heroes growing up. One of my great heroes in my book, Abby Hoffman died, Lenny Bruce died. These are the people that I actually looked up to. Um, everyone's going to die, you know. Everyone gets to die eventually. So you got to enjoy the little you have before you, well, before you don't have it any longer. That is really your death. Well, it goes back to my earlier videos that I would discuss about well, life is about chances and choices, and hopefully the odds are in your favor most of the time, and then you have survival, and then you have your pleasures, and you try to hopefully uh, enjoy whatever pleasure it may be, like I, I, I enjoy a good vape, there might be other ones, I like Eric Clampton, I talked about him once before in a video, Eric Clampton enjoys a you know, nine million dollar yacht out there in the out there on the seas or the oceans, or maybe one of the wealthy elite families enjoys a castle or an estate that goes on for eighty thousand acres. You know, and you know that that's to me that the pleasure itself is no different than me sitting here having a vape. Same thing, you still get pleasure. 
when you realize that, you actually do away with jealousy and envy and all that other crap that gets, gets in the way of, of all that. Some people like to live that way. They like to live with billions, if not trillions of dollars. Some people like that. And then there are other people that, you know, like me, that, you know, like enjoy a good vape. Or there are people that say, fuck you to the entire system and live under the bridge. You know, and they live their life that way and eat out of a, out of a can, uh, you know, eat out of a, you know, a bag or have a bottle of liquor or whatever to pass the time and get a buzz or whatever have you to kill some time. Or there are those that completely give up the system and yet live off the land in the wilderness or in the snows or the Rocky Mountains or, you know, wherever have you around the world. They're able to sustain themselves off of, off of eating other e- eating animals or plants or berries or vegetables and or fruits and living off the water, not being dependent upon natural gas or natural oil or or electricity or the water uh, sewage plants or any of that. They're able to just disappear into the thick of the night, so to speak, into the deep, deep tundra, so to speak, you know, where, you know, and I'm not talking about fugitives or anything, don't get me wrong, I'm talking about just someone that says the hell with the system, I'm going to go and live off the land, and, you know, they get pleasure from that, no different than someone that gets pleasure on his yacht, or has a fine cognac and a fine cigar, as a or someone has a vape on a, on a vapor flask and an El Cabron RDA build uh, with a titanium um, wi- uh, a wire with um, reads at uh, 0.09 ohms with nice um, I believe I have the uh, uh, samurai Japanese cotton in there. I mean that to me with a with my own do-it-yourself uh, e-liquid. And, uh, you know, I'm a happy guy. And there's no different than a guy out there on their, you know, $40 million yacht or uh, in a casino gambling their money away or someone that enjoys the, goes up to the tallest building that's ever been built and look at, at all the sites at night or during the day. Someone that enjoys fishing. The, the, the key is as long as you get pleasure out of it. So you have your choices and chances in life. Hopefully your odds are in your favor. And um, you have your survival and your pleasures. And that's all there is. There is nothing else other than that. And hopefully you'll get as much pleasure you can out of life instead of pain. Because there is pain as well. Um, pain can be controlled by your mind. Um, mind over matter. Uh, stress can kill you quicker than anything, actually. Uh, my theory in life, this is my theory, I don't know how good my theory may be, but a lot of the cancers and the tumors and all this other bullshit has a lot to do with stress. Heart attacks, all this shit, heart disease, a lot to do with stress. And if you eliminate the stress from your life and get it down and that's all in the mind. That's all. Stress is a man-made thing, baby. That's all it is. It's all in the mind. And if you, when you eliminate that, uh, you know, you eliminate heart disease and heart attacks. Definitely heart attacks. No, well, you know, heart, eliminate cancers and everything else. Believe me, has a lot to do with it. Of course, smoking those uh, tar cigarettes uh, don't help. But still you can even control that to a larger degree. So I'm going to call this video Subjectivity and Objectivity. And I'm sure no one will watch this video. At least not get to this point in the video. But that's okay. Because maybe someday when someone really wants to take life seriously and not want to be entertained all the time on uh, YouTube, 
they'll start to realize that what that's what my channel is all about is for you to gain deeper insight into life to understand life understand how things work and uh, enjoy your life the best you can and I let you guys go have a good one bye